Well, last night was another live stream event and it was the turn of trees and bushes. Not quite versus just right. Well, just right according to the way I paint them. So sit back and enjoy. I'll try and put some timestamps down so you can jump ahead to the various sections where I cover things like paint, brushes, technique, uh, lots of tips and tricks. Watch it right to the very end because it's packed with little bits of information all the way through. I hope you enjoy it and if you do maybe consider giving me a little tick in the box with a thumbs up so that people know you enjoyed it. Uh, leave some comments for me and if you really want to know what's coming up in the next consider giving a subscribe. Don't forget you've got to ring a little bell as well so you get the notifications as well. But in the meantime sit back and enjoy and watching me getting it wrong and then hopefully getting it right. Happy painting people. Uh, more painting. <laughs> oh yeah, sound is great. That's good, Sashi. Thanks so much. By the way, love your, your seascape. Do you did a good job of it. Um, there's there's my little my little version of it back there. Yay, there it is. No, wrong side. That one there. Yep. No, that one. There. There you go. So yeah, great painting, Sasha. Really, really nice. That seems to be quite a popular little painting. So I'm, I may end up having to do a um, having to do a little video on that one. So anybody who wants to see it done step by step can see it done step by step. Anyway, so tonight's subject. Well, I, I thought about it. Um, I had a chat with somebody else. You may drop in uh, later on. And it's trees and bushes. I know people are struggling with trees and bushes. Um, these fellas, trees and bushes, these, these fellas, oh, wrong side, that one, these ones here, okay, Bob called them corner of the brush trees and bushes, um, and I see people have a good go at them, they have a really good try, and somehow they get kind of lost part way through it, and it kind of ends up getting a little bit muddy looking, and, and all the problems people have with this, um, hands up, I mean, I've been there, same problems, I've had all these problems as well. So I thought, let's just do a little visit to the our setup here, which is just over here on the, I've got two cameras now. Folks, look, two cameras. I, mean, I don't, you know, the, the technology is bursting out of my head, but I have two cameras now. So we're gonna do uh, our usual setup, the, the not quite versus uh, just right setup here. So I got my, I got my, um, camera all set up over the top of the over the top of my um what is it canvas okay and we're going to have a have some fun and games of me getting it wrong and fingers crossed uh, getting it a bit right so right i'm just gonna I'm just gonna skip into another program right now called obs and i'm gonna just i'm gonna see a bit less of me and a bit more of the canvas i think so that's yeah push me out of the way get on this one here and i'm gonna just Oopsie. Yeah, grab that and just push that open. How does that look? That looks a bit better, doesn't it? Yep. Okay, so trees and bushes, not quite versus just right. I'll just shift this around a little bit. Okay. Ooh, that looks better. Okay, so first things first, all I've done to prep for this is I just put some liquid white on my canvas. Um, and I've checked it, I use my fingerprints as always, and I do, let me see if I can get a nice, get a nice zoom in on that one, on a fingerprint there, look at this, technology, so you can see my fingerprints, nice and clear, okay, so that's what we're looking for, we're looking for clear fingerprints, if you can only see the merest smudge of colour, then you've been a bit light with the liquid white, but far more likely that you have a little more on than you think you needed to. My, my other half always laughs. She said, who are you calling a little more on? <laughs> you have put a little more liquid white on your canvas than you need. And that in itself can cause you all number of problems. Um, and I actually did a little video on that called uh, liquid white too much versus not enough. Um, or too much versus just right rather. And it is, putting on too much is often the problem, often the problem, so anyway. So, that's what I've done, liquid white, and I put a little bit of phthalo blue on my canvas, just to, just to tint it up with a bit of colour. And I set out my palette, so let's have a look at my palette, and you'll see 
there's something very obvious missing here. So there's a little bit of phthalo blue I used. There's my cad yellow. Okay, and there's no dark green color here. There's a little sample of it down here. And that's what I'm going to show you now. I'm going to get that up close in the camera there. That is sap green and a little bit of black. And I don't know if you guys have been having problems with your colors. I know there is an issue regarding the mixtures. Um, but essentially, the paint that I was getting out of the tube was was more oil than paint. So my, my, my midnight black was more like midnight wet. And it was pretty unusable. So this is the first thing I get you to look at here. It's if you're pull it up in front of the camera if your dark base colors are really shiny and oily like this you're going to be in a world of pain because that is just too this is just too much oil and that's going to be a, a big problem later on when you try and paint over the top of that with a highlight essentially what's going to happen is your highlight won't stick to something which is oilier than the highlight so how do you fix the problem well it's quite low tech. Here we go. What you do is you get yourself a piece of cardboard and you just put your paint on there. I put this on here about 10 minutes ago. I don't know if you can quite see that, but can you see the, the oil that seeped out of that? So what I'm doing here is I'm drying my paint and you can see that the, um, the that really wet look is disappearing. It's becoming much more sort of like a satin look. So I am drying my paint out on a little piece of cardboard. So if you've got really wet paint, folks, then you'll find that just putting on a bit of cardboard or a bit of paper towel, not paper towel, but like newspaper, anything, that, anything that's a little bit absorbent, and just spread it out. I did this maybe half an hour ago. About half past seven, I discovered this mess. And then just move it around and just pick it up and then you'll find you have a much better time of things okay i'm going to just that back on my palette let me let me just scroll down in case i'm missing comments here from people no okay i think i'm good okay right so consistency of paint make sure your dark color is sticky make sure your highlight color is soft and buttery Okay. If this is too wet and this is too dry, they won't work and you will be struggling and you'll be working hard at this to try and get anything to stick. And just to show you that you can have the opposite problem sometimes, here is what came out of my tube of cadmium yellow. Can, can you see this? Let me pull this up in front of the camera here. This is like treacle this is about as sticky a paint as you're ever going to get this is what came out of a tube of, of yellow now this is the extreme guys okay it's a fresh tube of yellow paint i opened up and i practically busted up trying to get any paint out of it so if your yellow looks a bit like that then it needs to have something done to it and what i did is i I'm luckily i've got a, I've got a little tube of uh, linseed oil I keep to hand. I learnt my mistake from years back. Turning up at a, a live show event and having yellow paint that looked like concrete. So there you go. That's your first big tip. Check your condition of your paints. Okay. Tip number two. Check the condition of your brushes. Okay. I think more people get into trouble with this technique because of their brushes than anything else. Now, I'm going to bring these up onto my little zeroing in spot here. Okay, I'm going to hold these two brushes up side by side. Now, the one on the left here is worn, and the one on the right is relatively new. Okay, have a look at the ends of them. Get them in focus. There we go. This one is pretty much at the end of its working life. For doing things like trees and bushes, it's becoming quite old and stumpy and bristly. This one is a lot newer and softer, 
but more importantly it has all the little flags in other words it has all the nice little uh, broken split ends on it I can't even get my camera to zoom in on that bit this has got lovely little split ends and it's soft and flexible and it's perfect this one is a bit of a, a sledgehammer so check your brushes folks if you've got brushes which are that you're getting a little bit on the old side you're going to struggle and I'm going to demonstrate all this today so let's gab and more painting I think as I saw on spitting images I saw Donald Trump he said let's chat more zap so let's chat more zap okay so what should we paint first folks should I do the good side or the bad side maybe I should do the the bad side first so let's let's have a go at painting some some trees and I've dry cleaned this brush the brush I use for the liquid white and I I dry cleaned it and um and this again is another warm worn brush but it's pretty clean otherwise and I'm going to go into my my dark green color here and I'm going to pull out some paint and I'm going to do what you see Bob do he slides his brush forward yep, he slides it forward and gets a little ridge of paint okay and then kind of dabs it on and he makes a lovely tree shape isn't he he makes this really nice tree shape It looks kind of nice. I'll zoom in a little bit for you there. Okay, he makes a really good, good looking tree shape. And then you think, okay, maybe I could do a little more of that. So you get a bit more paint. And you start to sort of fill in a bit more. Okay. And you kind of keep working at it, try make a make a tree shape that looks kind of realistic. And next thing you know, it starts to get out of hand. And before you know it, you have created the ultimate in trees that don't quite look right. And I think you can probably tell where I'm going with this. Um, You guessed it. I have created a lollipop. Okay. Um, and you think you wouldn't do it. What's worse is when you stick a, a trunk under it and you think, oh, however did I manage to have that happen? Um, so <laughs> I don't know how it happens. I've done it a few times myself. I've done lollipop trees like that. Oh my goodness. Um, it's it, what's worse than a lollipop tree is when you give him a little friend and he's also a lollipop okay and then you stand back and you realize you've actually done a whole series of of lollipops okay and you you created like a lollipop uh, scene you know and and boy you're in a world of hurt so first tip on this or the next tip is get some idea of of the sort of tree you're going to paint get a reference picture get a photograph get something you can kind of compare what you're doing to what you actually want to paint um, because just kind of going at it and hoping for the best you, you nine times out of ten unless you really really kind of stop, stop and concentrate you'll end up creating these lollipop trees and I know I've done it a million times so this is this is not quite right um, let's do something a little bit nicer now I'm, I'm going to put this really old brush down because Although it's old and it doesn't technically matter, you can use a really old brush, right? I'm going to use a slightly nicer brush. It's still old. It's still a little on the bristly side. It's still had a, a good working life. I've used it a lot. But it's just that little bit better quality. It's just not quite as knackered as the other brush. And I can't tell you that is so... Um, so much better if you've got a slightly better quality brush to work with so let's do it again oh that's the only thing i was going to say to you look what i did i put paint on one side of my brush and then i forgot and i put it on the back of the brush as well now as i mentioned this isn't such a, a nightmare if you're just doing the dark underpaint you can get away with that the problem is when we start doing this with highlights I mean, getting highlight paint both sides of the brush you end up in a world of pain 
and I'll do that for you. I'll show you what happens. So let's go back to the, the, the just right side. I've got a, my nice brush here. And can you see on my brush there is a, like a black mark? Well, there used to be the Bob Ross logo on there. It used to, it used to have one of those on there, the Bob Ross logo, and that, that wore off many moons ago. So I replaced it with a little black mark. I just use black nail varnish. And what that does is it reminds me when I put paint on my brush, I want to see that mark every time. Okay. And same thing, pull your paint out flat. So you're getting on just one face and press and just push into the paint a little bit. This paint feels a little skiddy. Now, watch what I'm doing here. As I do this, I'm going to paint a, a right-handed tree. I'm going to paint branches coming in, sorry, a, a tree branches coming from the left. And for that, I'm going to use the right corner of my brush. So when I load it the paint, I'm going to favor that corner. I'm going to push that corner forward a little bit more. So I've got a nice amount of paint around that corner of my brush. And I'm going to think about painting individual branches, not a lollipop. So I'm going to think about painting branches of a tree that come in from the side. And I'm going to just tap my brush on its edge. And I'm going to just tap. And I'm going to stop. And I'm going to have a good look at what I've created. And add a little more. And stop. And then have another little look. And stop. And reload. Now... Painting trees is really a gentle process. It's no good just kind of going lollipop crazy on these things. Think about the shape of a nice tree, how their branches hang with age. Is it a younger tree, a sapling where the branches go a little more upright? See, I'm just gently going at this. I'm not overfilling it. I'm leaving a little bit of light coming through here and there. You know, it's kind of nice to just to have a little bit of the, the background sky peeking through. You notice I'm still on that, that corner. I'm still tapping mainly on that corner. I'm not flipping my brush backwards and forwards. Paint stop talking. <laughs> okay, Bill. Okay. Bill, I get nervous. I get, I get stage fright, and it comes out and I talk. So what I'm doing here is I'm kind of trying to create the, the illusion of some nice branches. Every once in a while, stop and have a look at the size of your tree. See if it's dark enough. Okay. So this is a much better start than the other tree. This is much more, I think, much more realistic looking for a tree. Just going to tidy up a little bit at the top. Okay. So there's your comparison. Take a little more time over the shape of the state of things. Okay, so let's do some highlighting. So I've got a, another clean brush, but again, it's that slightly worn out brush. Okay, so I'm going to go into my, my highlighting color, clean it out a little bit, give it a little push, and you can see that my paint is nicely loaded. Put it up in front of the camera. I got a nice line of paint going there. And I'm going to just start highlighting. Okay. Now, now the problem is, is I don't seem to be getting much paint from my brush. No matter how hard I try, 
I'll try again. And you can see what I'm doing is I'm just creating more of a more of a, a sludgy green mess. I'm not really creating a nice leafy branch, no matter how hard I try. Uh, if I try again, I'll put some more paint on my brush and I'll be very gentle with it and I'll just try. I'm, I'm not hitting the canvas very hard, I'm just literally tickling it. And yet, somehow, I don't quite get those nice individual little highlights, no matter how careful I am. And this is because this brush is a bit past it. It has lost its ability to hold the paint on its tips. It doesn't have the nice neat little flags that you need to make it work. And I'm being very gentle with this. And the problem is the paint just isn't where I need it. So no matter how good your technique, even have just having a bad brush is just not going to help your technique. So that's uh, one thing to check. Make sure your brushes are in good shape. Okay. Oh, and, and I tried putting it on both sides of the brush to see if it made any difference. And all it happened is just clog the brush up. So let's go to my nice brush. And again, I've got my logo facing up. I'm going to pull out a nice little bit of paint. I'm going to push it forward. And just look at the way this brush spreads. If I hold that at an angle here, this brush spreads and opens beautifully. I always liken this to being like a Spanish dancer's dress. Kind of like a, the way they kind of their dresses go back. I'll just favor that corner a little bit. So I've got a nice amount of paint right on the edge of my brush. I'll bring it up into my little focal zone. Okay. And I favored that corner a little more. The difference between this brush and that brush is that this brush is holding its paint right on the tip of the bristles. And I am going to load my brush frequently. And I'm going to highlight just one branch at a time. I'm doing sections, pieces of a tree, individual bits. I think if the light's coming this way, which is the way I'm painting it, this will be brightest, this will be more in shadow, and this will be the darkest side. So I'll start on the edge where it's a little bright. Okay, so I'm going just outside the dark shape. And as I run out of paint, so I'll start doing some in the middle. I'm going to leave that left hand side so you see a much much happier looking shape to my tree. Okay. Now you could have some branches poking out the front so it's okay but if you can sort of get this kind of shape then you can always come back and just add a little touch here and there. And so I swing my brush around to get it onto the spot I need it to. And I'm favoring that corner. I'm twisting my brush and hitting with the corner. And my paint will be on one side, not on the back. Okay, so you see a better quality brush, something a bit newer, a better shape to start with. It really pays dividends. Okay, so that that is the kind of technique that you want to try and get going for yourself. And that's really what I'm trying to get to. So these are just kind of two forms of bushy trees or deciduous type trees. But let's have a go at painting those trees and bushes that Bob's famous for, which is the little pushy up trees and bushes. So um, I'm going to go back to my, my old brush, my brush that I used before. And I'm going to go just through my, my dark paint here. I'm just going to pull it through. And give it a little push. And then I'm going to try and make some little bushy shapes here. So 
so yeah, kind of you can hear how old this brush is. It's really crunchy. Hi KT, nice to see you. So, I'm just pressing in here just to try. I'm struggling to get some paint out of this brush. I'll be quite honest. It's 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 not the newest brush, as I say. It's it's just I'm really struggling to get some paint out of this old brush. It is just too far gone. Okay. Let me just dry clean this brush so I can use it to give it its best chance possible. So I'm gonna give my brush a dry clean, paint towel, squeeze out as much paint as I can. So it's as clean as I'm going to get it, okay. And I'm going to load my highlight colour on this brush. Now, look at the angle I'm going to use about. I'm going to pull it through the paint, okay. So you'd think that would be okay. I got a nice amount of paint, but have a look at the end of my brush. Get into the little focal zone. Right on the corner of my brush, right there, can you see that big old chunk of paint? Okay, because the brush is pretty old, it doesn't want to let the paint distribute. And what you end up with is kind of this sort of call them chunky monkeys. You end up with a brush that's basically just overloaded with paint and it will not open up. The bristles are too short and stumpy and worn, and you end up with these chunks of paint especially around the front now that happens because the way i load the brush i let the brush go forward like that into the paint and it's more like a snow plow okay what it's doing is it's driving paint ahead of the bristles and it creates that kind of a shape and that just isn't very nice but i'm going to try and paint with it and i'm going to just touch and press with it if i can I'm going to try and create one of Bob's famous bushes. Well, I'm not doing badly with it. But I'm struggling to get something nice and lacy and open. And I'm having to push very hard to get this to go. Let me put a little more paint on my brush. Now, something which happened to me a lot and this is just one of those things you're going the right way with the brush and then for some inexplicable reason you forget and you start going the other way so you're going out 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 and then you somehow forget and then you start going back you pressing in and you start creating what i call thumbprints they look like like you dip your thumb in it and you get these kind of shapes so it's no longer that nice lacy open pattern and you end up creating kind of this muddy mess and frustration sets in and you end up kind of just jabbing at it more and more and more to see if you can recover it and you can't because once it starts to blend you're in trouble and again this is because it's an old brush and I loaded it wrongly. I, I lent it forward and I dragged it through. And you can drag it through one way and then you can forget and then turn your brush over and then drag it through on both sides. And so you end up with a brush which is just one big clogged mess. So my, my advice is for this is before you touch your painting, have a good look at the end of your brush. And if it looks like this brush, you're not going to get very far with it. So if your brush looks like this, clogged and stuck together, then it's time for a clean up. And if it stays blocking up, then it's time for another brush. OK, so that's, again, another little problem. So let's switch now. Let's go back to my nice brush, the one I did this nice tree with. And let's do a little bit of underpainting. 
So I'm just going to wipe my brush off. This is the some of this dark colour off. I want the brush in a reasonably unblocked condition. I've got this little spot on my camera where I can get things to focus. So it's reasonably unblocked. Grab my palette. Hello Marlene, nice to see you. So pay attention folks. When you look at my brush, you can see it is has a round side to it. Okay, it has a round edge. And if you roll it over, you can see it has an edge that is crimped. This has been manufactured this way, it's crimped, it's, it's folded back on itself. And I load my brush in one direction. I load it with the rounded side coming towards me. This is by habit. I've done it this way to remind me not to turn my brush round. And instead of leaning the brush forward, I lean my brush back. And the technique is to open the brush up. Let's try and get that sideways on for you. Let's try and get the angle right here. So the idea is you want to press your brush into the paint and lean the handle back. And when you look at my palette, you can get a close up of that, you can see it looks like that Artex stuff that we used to put on the ceilings. It does not look like a smudge or a smear. It means that on my brush, you can get that in focus, it means on the ends of my bristles, every bristle has a little tiny bit of paint on it. So, rounded side towards me, bristles opened, okay, opened up. And now I'm going to turn my brush around its side to the top. Okay, let me get this into the picture here. Let me shove this over a little bit. There we go. So around its side to the top. And I think about that as 12 o'clock. 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. And I'm pressing and I'm letting the brush come back to center. It's important that you don't do this with it. Pull my painting back again. It's important that you don't do that with it. Okay, make, that makes lovely grass, but it does not create an underpainting for a bush. Okay, this is textured. Mm. Mm. So, round this side towards you, 12, and create this lovely textured bush. My brush is staying upright. I don't tip it the way I'm going. I keep it up, and I press, and I let the bristles splay. Okay. You can see the shape of that. It looks like it looks like a little explosion, like a little bomb went off. Let's give my brush a dry clean. I'm trying to give you a nice detailed explanation of all these things. And eventually if you kind of learn to paint just one technique, it'll becoming it'll come natural to you. You won't have to stop and think about it. You'll just pick up the brush and it'll just work that way every time. So this time I'm going to go through this, this highlight colour. And I am going to go through with my brush went back. Okay. Through the paint and lean the brush away from me. Round its side towards me. And really consistent. And give it a little push. Give it a little push and then before you touch your painting, look at the end of your brush. I know we'll focus so uh, look at that. That's beautiful and open. That brush is gonna be like lace to work with. So now you just barely have to touch the canvas to get the paint from the brush. It just pops off the off the brush. 
hardly any effort at all. It just absolutely pops off. Now, I am going to just tweak my pen a little bit. It wouldn't have made any difference to the dark bush, to the to the one on the opposite side. This would have made no difference to it. But for those of you who think that you can just keep adding liquid white to improve things, well, you can do it a little bit. But liquid white will eventually turn your paint to mush to the point where it's no longer usable. So again, I've loaded my brush, I've got a nice amount of paint on there. And I've done the highlight, and you can see I've gone a little bit bigger than the dark shape. Now I'm going to paint another little piece of this brush, and I'm going to be going more to the right and then to the centre. Just add a little bit of highlight into the centre of that brush. Yeah, you is not being friendly tonight. Okay. Now the way I always explain this when I'm teaching is to think about this as being like a bus stop and that the little bits of paint on your brush are like passengers on a bus. What you want to do is you want to arrive at the bus stop and just drop off the passengers. You don't want to crash the bus. So if you just go up gently and touch, you'll leave just the smallest amount of paint on that little bush. It's important that you don't keep pounding on it because what will happen is you just chase the paint back up into the brush. And it doesn't matter how many times you hit it, once you get that paint going back up into the bristles, it's gone for good. You're never going to get it back. You're always going to be struggling to get that paint from this brush. So that's a better looking bush. This isn't quite so good. Let me do a couple more of these little bushes here. Okay, so I've gone back to my dark brush, and let's do let's do a little bush here that's more like a little tree. I can do it down here. Let's shove this up a little bit higher. Let's do a, a little little tree down here. So again, I'm going through the dark. Parrot fashion, I'm going to do this, guys. Rounded side towards me. Rounded side to the top. That with that nice little shape going. Come on, a little bigger. Same again. I'm gonna another little one standing on his shoulders. Again, I'm thinking about the size and shape. Just throw the one on hope. Got a nice, a nice sort of shape on the long top. Now, if I have a fault with doing things like this, I tend to want to go back and tidy them up, and they never look quite natural. So, my top tip is don't let them look a little raggedy. Yeah, there we go. She's looking like a frog to me, but there we go. These are just two bushes, sitting one sitting on top of the other. Just gonna scroll down, make sure I'm not. And I'm gonna go back to my nice brush, back to my my highlight paint. Now you notice, have a look at my yellow colour. It's still pretty good. Okay. So another clue, if you're picking up a lot of the dark colour. From here and transferring it onto your palette, the chances are you're just hitting too hard um, and you've not got enough paint to start with. So, again, I'm going to think about the, the light coming from the right side. So, I'm going to start, I'm trying to get my hand out of the way, I'm going to just start, I'm going to just touch, touch, touch. I'm just dropping off all my little passengers. Okay, um, most of my passengers have gone. Okay. There's no point in carrying on hitting this, it's not going to come off, but I, I have just a little bit of colour left. And I use that for the shady part of my tree, so I've got my highlight. 
Now, if you do pick up a lot of colour, okay, and it's possible, just take your brush and that's it. That's all you have to do. Just knock off the worst of it and then when you go back through your yellow colour, you see, you're not going to contaminate it. Okay, and I've loaded my brush, you see what I did there, I just sprang it a couple of times. I got my Artex, I got my passengers, and I can see that I have to do maybe another section of this bush. I'm trying to paint this to one side so you can see as my kind of as my elbow. Leave this the next section of this little bush. And as I run out of paint, the passengers. So I'll do the shadowy side. And again. one more time. Always rounded side. You'll get sick of me hearing that. Sorry Bill, you'll probably tell me off for talking too much again, but if I do it and say it over and over and over again, I'm hoping it's going to hopefully stick. Rounded side towards me. Do the highlight side first. This wants to be darker, darker, darker down in here, so I'm not going to go too crazy with the highlights. You see the difference between these bushes and the ones I did over there. So, paint consistency, quality of your brushes, and then loading your brushes properly is kind of the, the crucial things. Well, I try to throw as many tips as I can into the situation here. I hope I don't overload you now. I'll point out to you that, that what you're seeing here is how I used to paint 20 plus some years ago before I. I had some schooling at the Bob Ross teacher training. This is how I used to try and do it. And I had great teachers um, at the Bob Ross company provided. And basically they beat it out of me. And they stopped me. They stopped me making bad choices and bad technique. So this is the product of actually getting some professional training by the Bob Ross company about 22 years ago. And this takes practice. Um, I do some little zooms with people and I, and I know people struggle to try and do this. They kind of really sort of get a bit frazzled over this. It takes practice, folks. Um, but if you think, well, he paints, he's copying what I've done in the past. He's taking, the only person I'm kind of taking the mickey out of doing this is me. Okay. This is me 20 plus years ago. This is me 20 years of teaching. Okay. So you can all do this it just takes practice and there is good practice and there is hit and hope type practice i'm going to record all this i'm, I'm going to record all this and i and i post it on my youtube channel paul anson art um so you can go back and review all of this stuff and you can look back through it again and if you miss anything and then you can pick up some tips and tricks there so um but Good practice and bad practice, those are the things. Get your paint consistency right is the other thing. So um, I'm hoping that some of this has been useful for you. I'm hoping you you can pick up a few things from this because trees can be very frustrating to do. And again, it was one of those things. I had lots of nemesis and trees were one of the things I really struggled with. Okay, um, I'm going to just finish off here with a little bit about the shapes of trees and particularly those little trees with sort of little the old branches and things on them because I know people sort of struggle sometimes. Hang on, I just got away from the microphone for a second. So I'm in the other half of the studio. Okay. Because I know people have trouble with tree shapes. Okay, and, and that's really because kind of this kind of thing shape here is this lollipop shape and it's to have a particularly this time of year it's a great time to look at the shape of trees now this is a this is a this is made of rubber and it's great to, sh to draw with i haven't got enough color here but if i if i draw you a nice center line for a tree can you see that you can't see that can you you can scratch it let's go back and scratch it there okay can you do it on this side no this side if i scratch that that's the center line of a tree. Okay. 
the top parts, the top branches of a tree, when it's nice and young, are upright. Okay, upright. And as they get a little older, they start to grow a little more to the sides, and because of their age, they tend to grow a little longer. And as the tree gets a little older, its branches, like us, tend to sag a little. Okay. And it creates this shape, which looks like an arrowhead. Now this is a very generic shape, and this is just a, this isn't a perfect tree shape. But if you could always think about your tree shapes as being like a, like an arrowhead. In other words, if I put a if I put a trunk under that, can you kind of see that I've got a kind of an arrowhead there? Oh, no, sorry, I got kind of like an arrowhead there, and that's kind of a useful thing if you can remember the shapes of trees, not to just think it and hope but actually think about what's holding them together. Okay. Um, one thing I would always urge people to be careful of is painting what I call alien hand trees. Um, <laughs> alien hand trees. I've painted more than a few of these folks. And I grab a brush. I'm going to grab, make it very obvious what I'm going to do here. Okay. I just grabbed a filbert brush. I'm going to go through this dark colour and both sides, nice lot of paint. We paint a nice tree trunk to start with. We got a nice looking tree trunk. There we go. A nice looking tree trunk. Okay. Okay, now it's a bit thin where it goes in the ground. It's a bit too fat at the top. That's okay. We can live with that. Okay. And we do. Really. Again, I'm not taking the mic. This is this is kind of how I thought trees looked, honestly. And I did these really big tree trunks that looked like that. This was way too big, and it went too thin. Okay, and then horror of horrors, I would put branches on, I'm just stylizing this, I'm not doing this seriously, but this is how I used to paint my trees, and it looked like an alien hand, okay, with a palm in the middle, and these funny looking fingers poking out of it, and you think you wouldn't do it. Um, I blame it on my background, which is engineering. <laughs> Everything had to be separated by an equal distance. But I painted alien looking palm tree type trees a lot. And this is really where you want to kind of avoid getting yourself into it. Okay, that's a five fingered alien tree. They have what I call chicken foot trees. Okay, you think you wouldn't paint a chicken foot tree? And I've done plenty of those too. Um, and sometimes what looks worse is when you've got a whole forest of chicken foot trees, and um, then you try and disguise it by painting a lollipop on top of it, and you can see the pain you get into. So think about the shapes of your trees. Think about a nice center line, nice branches, evenly spaced. And think about how they need to shape with age. Okay. An hour really isn't long enough to run through everything there is to talk about trees. But I hope that some of these little mistakes and errors will help you along the way not to walk into the same sort of booby traps that I used to get it myself into. Let's say, trees and bushes, not quite, just right, well, just right according to me. See, I'm covered in paint here. So, I hope that was useful. Um, let's just skip out of this program and pop the screen back to the way it was. 
boy look at this technology I wouldn't say I'm a genius at it but I, I think I'm getting a little better at it okay so um, I hope you found that was useful um, it won't be long if you can just remember those few little tips and tricks and pointers and things and in very soon you'll be painting you'll be painting those little trees let me put that under the camera you'll soon be painting these beautiful little trees and bushes this wasn't done by me it's my other half she painted this but there you go so yeah you're going to be painting trees you'll be flying soon okay so have fun with your trees don't get frustrated check out your kit make sure you're not trying to do this with brushes which are a bit over the over the hill okay so you want to make sure you've got some good kit to start with um over my shoulder there's a couple of little paints that little painting the little oops the other side that little seascapes one i did before christmas time i think that was quite a popular painting <coughs> i see it pop up on the uh, beginners page um and that's obviously quite nice and i'm probably going to do i'll probably do that one as a as a this one yeah i'm going to do this one i'll do this one as a live stream um sorry as a recorded one and i'm going to put it up on on youtube so anyone didn't get to see it and wants to see that one in more detail i'll show you how it started and how i painted that one um so anyone else can can follow along with it in case you want to find it so i'll redo that one um the other one that's over my shoulder it's that's a little one to inspire you it's a little bluebell wood painting that one's still kind of a little bit wet so i can't touch it very much so that one's that one's very very soft but that's it folks um thanks for joining thanks for watching thanks for being a lovely audience um sorry if i talk too much kind of my, my nervous thing <laughs> but um that i've had a covid jab so i'm feeling a bit a bit loopy today but anyway thanks very much it's gone just got nine o'clock so it's time for another cup of tea um be good to each other stay safe enjoy your painting check out your brushes and um keep wearing your masks okay anyway mwah. good luck with your painting and i look forward to seeing you all on bob ross for beginners page again um i'll drop in some little tips and hints as i go and if i can give anyone any help anytime uh, just just message me um, you can do it through Facebook or go on to YouTube and have a quick look on there the Paul Ranson art um, I'll drop some links and stuff around but if you want to go and look at some of the the free stuff I've got on there some demonstrations and tutorials you're more than welcome and you can message me through that as well but uh, in the meantime have fun stay safe bye